All right, so I'm currently working on my lure room and it's nowhere near completion. So I'm actually just doing this out in the, the other part of my basement. So I got a milling bit, got it lined up. Um, and then a lot of people guessed what I was doing, obviously using magnets. I shoved a couple other things in that container. Like I said, I don't have a tripod or anything set up, so um, I'm sorry about that. But I got 100 magnets. They're neodymium, rare earth magnets, um, but they're neodymium, uh, eighth inch by eighth inch. And I'm using an eighth inch bit. Um, it walks a little bit in this little 10 inch drill press, so it makes the hole just a little bit bigger than it needs to be. But that's all right. Sorry about the noise. I'm going to do this one real quick. I got this locked in and ready to roll. Um, it's aluminum. Drills pretty nice. Pretty easy. So you just take it slow. You can drill it a little deeper than it needs to be. It's fine. It can be filled in. And then for and then when I go to drop the magnet in, clean the hole out, put a little bit of uh, ultra black. Um, you can use high temp silicone that's orange or whatever color. Um, I just went with the black um, because um, well, it's good up to 500 degrees. Lead melts at 600 degrees. Um, but the mold itself, I mean, usually is 200 degrees at most. So using something that's good for 500 degrees is is fine. Um, sorry about the lighting. They got a couple of them in there already. Um, I just gotta find my mat, find my uh, so you pretty much just get them anywhere near, and they they drop right in place now so the hooks stay put um, I showed in another video on Facebook and I shared it on fish brain also I was holding this upside down these magnets are 1.4 pounds of uh, pull pulling power so I'll leave a link in the description for these magnets and um, the milling bit and stuff an eighth inch drill bit or pre-drill with a smaller one and then step it up to the eighth inch and like I said you can go deeper than um, you need to because you just just put a little bit of that um, silicone in the hole and then drop it in so that the magnet ends up being flush with what it was before unless you want to go to a flat eye hook um, then you're gonna want it down just a little bit further um, so it leaves more room and then you can switch it to a flat eye hook um, another thing that I've done is just with this mold, this is a shad dart. I'm just going to set it up here, try to anyway, um, so that I have some light. I uh, modified it, so I, this is a used mold and I use it to make floating jigs. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. <clears throat> but I got some hooks in that were a little bit heavier gauge, so I just milled out the hook eye spot so that I can use the heavier gauge hook um, and then most of the time if you just use put the heavier gauge hook in there make sure you have it in the right spot and not off to the side you can clamp down or smack it a few times with a rubber mallet and um, this where the hook shank goes will open up just enough or you can take a flat file or a small round file and just open that up just a little bit with a file um, and then there's another modification that I did to another mold I did some with the Dremel on this shad dart I did with a Dremel and then I also used some flat um, this one's a little messier this was my first mold that I screwed with but I used a little piece of magnet there for this to hold the wire keeper in place you can see that see I got a little notch in there for the wire keeper and then I notched it with a razor blade for the hook 
Um, and I just used flexible magnetic strip. Um, and that has a double-sided sticky tape already on it. So you just take a little bit and then stick it on there. And then um, it works out pretty good. So you can set your hook. Set your hook in place. And then... Um, so you can do this one-handed. So... And then drop your wire keeper in place. See, and that magnet's going to keep it from sliding down. Without that magnet, that sucker slid all the time. I'd get one out of maybe ten that would walk on me, and it's so annoying. Um, this hole up here, though, I just started putting magnets in these. I'm going to mill this out, and I'll put a magnet there. Because that uh, underspin, this, this mold, you can't get a shad dart mold with an underspin. So I added the underspin because I like the eighth ounce shad dart with an underspin and then wire keeper but notice how I left some that are not modified so I can still do other ones and then I also added a notch up on this one for a flat eye so it's got a little pocket there put that in with a dremel tool and dremel tools are generally pretty cheap you can pick them up you know Walmart or Farm and Fleet, Amazon. You can check, um, just check around. You can usually get a pretty good buy on those. Um, but the magnetic strip works pretty darn good, and it's dirt cheap. So, and you don't with this modification. So for the um, wire keeper, I just used a little file. And I opened up that hook slot just a little bit so that I could add it. And then just, just a little piece of magnet. Just stick it on there. And then, like I said, a razor blade. And you're you're ready to rock. And then that keeps it from sliding. Um, what else? Oh, another thing that I was going to say is I, I also make, like I said as, earlier, I said that I made floating jigs. And you notice how got handles off on this one and the handles off on this other shad dart um, for the floating jigs so that's high impact foam one thing you need to know also if you if you want to start making high um, high impact foam floating jigs is if you smoke your molds with a candle um, it's it makes a pretty good mess it actually sticks to these when you boil them because I boil boil the mold um, for nine to ten minutes depending on what I'm using or what I'm making the size of the jigs that I'm making I usually just let it run for this one I let run for ten minutes when I'm making the three-quarter end or an extra minute's not gonna hurt anything a lot of people say nine minutes but I'd let it go for ten um, in later videos I'll actually show how I'm making all of these jigs um, like I said I'm still working on setting up the lure room and stuff so it's going to be a little bit um, got a lot of different things i'd like to show everybody i'm going to have to cut this video short though because my kids are upstairs driving my wife nuts so i'm gonna have to go help out or i'll be in the doghouse thanks for watching please subscribe um and i'm i don't know I figured uh, you guys, um, I mean, the instructions are on on the gasket, man. you know, so you guys could put a little bit of gasket material on there, drop them in, make sure they're flush, and then let it set up the full cure time. Every brand's going to be a little bit different, so I don't really want to go into the exact time and everything that that stuff takes because it might be different. So just read the package and make sure that you know let it cure long enough before you go um, using it, melting lead in it or boiling it, obviously. So, all right, thanks for watching. Like I said, um, hit the subscribe, watch out for more videos, and hopefully I'll have a tripod set up and my lure room done. It's going to be pretty sweet. So, all right, thank you. Bye.